Hi, in today's video we're going to take a look at how to set up tool offsets. Uh, this particular machine is the FTL 320, uh, but the setup is going to be the same for any machine with 808D uh, control. So sit back, relax, and follow along. Okay, so the first step in setting up your tools is obviously to place the tools in the turret. And this particular machine we're using as a demo today has an eight position uh, bi-directional turret, but it really doesn't matter if it's a, you know, a lower style tool post, a four position uh, horizontal uh, automatic tool turret, you know, the concepts are the same. You call your tool so you can activate it. Uh, and then anything you do as far as setting up, measuring the tool is going to be uh, updated in the you know tool that's active in its tool table. Uh, so you'll see a little bit more of that here. Uh, first step, we're going to call that tool. So if you go into your TSM, we're going to call. We're going to start with tool six in this case. It's just an 80 degree roughing tool. Uh, so we punch in six cycle start and you can see now on our screen that T6 D1 is active as well as our LCD screen here. Uh, next step we're going to turn on the spindle so we can take a turning cut and measure that diameter. So uh, give it a spindle speed, spindle direction and again cycle start. All our automate CNC lathes come standard with a MPG hand wheel unless it's a automatic uh, 808D with a manual turning plus option then you actually have a, a carriage that slides on linear uh, rails but again concept is the same the machine might vary from what you're looking at here slightly but everything applies so we're just jogging in slowly and we're going to take some time here we're going to take there we go we're going to take a turning cut we're going to take a nice and slow so we can uh, get a as perfect as the surface finish as we can to measure off of one nice little trick that you can use you know Depending on how big your depth of cut and your material, you're going to, you know, have a bit of deflection that plays into it. So if you want to be super accurate, you can actually take a turning cut that, you know, would be about what your, uh, you know, cuts in your program are going to be. And then you can measure off of that and you'll be a little more accurate. But for most work, this is going to get you within a couple tenths anyways. So we just took a turning cut. Now we'll jog the machine out, hit reset, so our spindle stops, and then we're gonna measure that diameter. And so the next step, we have our measurement, and we're going to press measure tool. We're measuring in the X. And we're just going to punch that, that in. So once we punch our value in here of our, our turn diameter, then we press set X length. And I want you to notice something here. Our X value didn't change. So that's uh, a good indication. If you don't see your digital readouts changing to what you think you know it should be. So right now we should actually be seeing our 1.194 uh, diameter. So to fix that, we're actually looking at a relative coordinates right now we want to look at an actual work coordinate system and so as soon as we press that and activate that okay that makes sense our digital readout says you know what the same number that we punched in 
that's all there is to do. So on X, we're going to punch in our next tool. Uh, we could go back to TSM, punch that value in, or we can also hit the tool change button here right on the front. Tool 8 is active. Again, for demonstration purposes, this looks like a 55 degree uh, turning tool. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to give it a spindle speed. Turn our spindle on with a spindle direction and a cycle start. And then again, we're going to jog in uh, and take a turning cut and measure that. got a steel insert on this with a, a broad radius so uh, you can audibly hear the difference in a polished insert that's made for turning aluminum and one that's made for turning steel but demonstration purposes again we don't really care we're just trying to get the concepts down Take that turning cut, back the machine out so you have enough room to get a reading. Reset on the front of the control and measure that newly turned diameter. Measure tool. Again, you can see on our screen, tool eight is activated and D1. So anything we do from this point is going to be in the tool A uh, offset values. Uh, we want to measure X and now we're just punching in our turn diameter. So we are at one inch. Okay, and we're gonna set up tool number one now. Same thing, either punch in tool one in your TSM or just hit tool change till it spins around. Uh, and again, give it a spindle speed. We're gonna set up a parting tool, give it a direction, cycle start. Turning cut, back off the parts. We have room to measure once again. Reset, stops the spindle and allows us to uh, measure our part. M measure tool, measure X. length and again our digital readout now reads what we just punched in and that's all there is to setting up tools in the X uh, direction so now we're gonna go on to Z this is where it gets a little more confusing uh, X is simple you're not it doesn't even really matter what your machine and how big the part is it's calculating you know the center line of your spindle so every time we take a turning cut we cut that off it's you know you you're dividing the diameter by two and you know finding the center line of the spindle so we can take a turning cut every time with a different tool it doesn't matter 
If you do that same thing off the face of the work, you're changing that zero position each time and you're gonna have variances in your calculation. So you need a set uh, reference position when you're setting up Z. Now we could do that very same thing off the front of this part, use a gauge block, you know, take a turning or a facing cut with the first tool and then use a gauge block and set up each tool after that off the front face of the part. The problem is when your part changes position and you need to set up a new tool, then you no longer have that same reference plane. Uh, for that purpose, I like to use, you know, a constant that never changes like this surface on the chuck here. So I'll take a uh, gauge block, set up all my tools off this surface. Actually, it's the backside, but um, doesn't matter if your tool turret was on the front, you'd use the front, but it'll make sense in a minute. So let's get to that right now. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing. We might as well start with the tool that's active right now, tool number one. We'll get, grab a gauge block and we'll set it up off this back surface here. So again, I'm gonna grab my MPG hand wheel Basically what I'm doing is bringing the tool close to the chuck so this won't slide down in between. Then I start bringing the carriage away from the chuck and away from my gauge block so I can slide this, you know, with just a slight interference fit, you know, you can feel a little tension on it. But it has advantages to going away from the chuck for one, you know, you're not going to bust your tool tip. And that's a biggie. You bust a few of these you know, $10 to $20 inserts and you, you learn real quickly that the old method of uh, bringing your tool on the, uh, onto a sheet of paper is mm, probably not the best way to do things. Um, but if that's what works for you, go ahead and keep continuing to do it. So we're just slowly jogging this away. Uh, and then I'll actually bring it back. And then on the front of my control, uh, I'm going to switch to jog mode and you can use jog mode. You can use the directional keys and back away from the chuck or you can still continue to use uh, the hand or the MPG itself. It just moves in increments as opposed to hand wheel mode where it moves continuous. So now uh, we're going to select an increment value. So we have here in the one position, this is a tenth of a thou. Uh, the 10 is actually a thou, and then the one is 10 thou. So we're gonna start 10 thou. Uh, and work our way. So right there is almost perfect. So now we'll jump to tenths. And we'll just slowly walk out. There. You can actually. Perfect. So again, measure tool. We're going to measure in the Z position this time. So Z. And then in this field, this is actually our gauge block size. So in this case, I'm using a 600 thou uh, gauge block. So I'll punch in my 0.6 there and then set Z length. You can see our digital readout updates itself. We're, you know, 600 thou away from that reference plane and we're good to go. So now we can set up the next tool. So we are going to do the same thing, jump back into hand wheel mode, move your turret or tool away, select the next tool you're setting up, and do the exact same thing. We're going to
should be pretty close right there. So now we'll jump back into jog mode. Select. Right about there. So again, uh, measure Z is active. Our gauge block size from before is still there, so 0.6. So now all we have to do is set Z length. Again, our digital readout updates to read 0.6, and we're good to go on that tool. And the process is the same. We just keep on doing this to however many tools we have. There's a few instances where, for instance, on this turning tool here, uh, you can set that turning tool up a couple different ways. You know. As you can see, if we did the gauge block size, we'd be on the side of the insert itself. So you just got to remember that when you're programming uh, and, and to be careful and set it up however you can remember. Some people like to take that front face and then, you know, subtract half the diameter of that V there, which is, I think, 72 thou or something like that on this uh, insert, and then use the exact point of that turn uh, threading tool is your z zero but again it's it's up to you and up to uh, you know how you can remember to program and how you normally do it uh, there is no right or wrong and that pretty much covers everything there is to know about setting up tools uh, will for regular turning or facing tools there's a little bit of difference when you're setting up uh, inside tools or drills, boring bars, etc. and we'll get to that right now.